supposed to write the standard form of the equation of the line that is parallel to the given line and passes through the given point. It's important to note that parallel means the same slope. So we need to write an equation that goes through this point and has the same slope as the line that we're given. So the first thing we need to do is figure out what it is that the slope is of this line. Since this is in slope-intercept form, it's easy to know what the slope is. It's the number that you're multiplying by x. It's the coefficient of x. Therefore, a parallel slope is the same. It's also 3. Now using this slope and this point, we're going to make an equation in point-slope form. That's why it's called point-slope form. If you have a point and a slope, you can make an equation. Put in the numbers in the appropriate spots. Six is the y value. X has a value of zero and the slope is m. Once you get an equation, the directions say to write it in standard form. Standard form is positive ax plus by equals c. A, B, and C are capital because they're integers. So whole number is positive or negative, including zero. This plus sign is here because the lead coefficient, the coefficient of x, has to be positive to be in standard form. So we manipulate this equation until we get it to be that way. If I get rid of my parentheses by distributing the 3 here, I'm just going to get 3x. I want my terms with x's and y on the same side. I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides. And I'm going to add 6 to both sides. So essentially, the 6 moved over here, changed signs. The 3x moved over here and changed signs. This is not in standard form. Because my leading coefficient, the coefficient of x, rather, needs to be positive. So if we multiply each term by negative 1, we're going to get 3x minus y is negative 6. So the standard form, 3x minus y equals negative 6. All integers, x and y are on the same side, and the coefficient of x is positive. Number two, the slope of this line is 6, therefore the parallel slope is also 6. Point slope form, because I have a point, I have a slope, is y minus negative 3 equals the slope, which is 6, times the difference of x and x sub 1. y minus a negative 3 is like y plus 3. If I distribute the 6, I get 6x minus 0. If I were to subtract y from both sides, I would keep the x, the 6 in front of the x positive. So standard form here is 6x minus y equals 3. Number three, it's a little bit different. It's different because we don't know what the slope is. We don't know what the slope is because it's not in slope-intercept form. To get it in slope-intercept form, we want to get y by itself. I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides of the equation. I'm going to divide each term by 3. So then my slope is negative 2 thirds, which means a parallel slope is the same as negative 2 thirds. Point slope form, y minus y sub 1 
equals the slope times the difference of x and x sub 1. y value of my ordered pair right here is 4. My slope is negative 2 thirds. The x value of this same ordered pair is 2. So lots of different ways to proceed here. This one's different because for two reasons. One, this x value is not zero, and it was for the first two problems. And two, the slope is a fraction, which is more typical than it not being a fraction. I'm going to first get rid of my parentheses, distribute the negative two-thirds. We get negative two-thirds x plus four-thirds. At some point, you have to get rid of your fractions because standard form only uses integers. I'm going to do that now by multiplying each term by 3. Times 3, times 3, times 3, times 3. Leaving us with 3y minus 12 equals negative 2x plus 4. Notice here on the right, these 3's cancel because you're multiplying and dividing by it. fix my terrible writing here. We then want to get all the x and y terms on the same side. I'm going to add 2x to both sides. Get 2x plus 3y. I'm going to add 12 to both sides. That way I get the 12 over here with the 4. So standard form is 2x plus 3y equals 16. Next directions, write the standard form of an equation of a line that is perpendicular to the given line and passes through the given point. Perpendicular. Instead of the same slope, use the negative reciprocal. In other words, take the slope that you're given, change the sign, and then make the numerator the denominator, the denominator the numerator. Number four here, this is in slope-intercept form. The slope is clearly negative 2. Therefore, the perpendicular slope. Change the sign. It makes it positive 2. Reciprocate it. Instead of negative 2 over 1, it would be 1 over 2. So now we're going to use this perpendicular slope and this point to make an equation and then put it in standard form. y minus y sub 1 equals m times the difference of x and x sub 1. y sub 1 is negative 3. Slope is 1 half. x sub 1 is 0. So it gives us y plus 3 equals, distribute the 1 half, you get half x. I'm going to subtract y from both sides, keep my x coefficient positive. Then you get rid of this one half, so I'm going to multiply each term by two. Six equals x minus two y. So standard form, x minus two y equals six. Number five is a little different once again because it's not in slope-intercept form. So to get it in slope-intercept form, we're going to add four y to both sides and divide each term by five. That makes the slope 4 fifths, therefore a perpendicular slope, change the sign and reciprocate it. It's a negative 5 fourths. Trying to correct my ridiculous handwriting. Negative 5 fourths. Using point slope form, I plug these numbers in. y1 is 8, slope is negative 5 fourths, x sub 1 is negative 15. 
We do something a little bit different for this one, which you may or may not appreciate. I'm going to multiply each term right now by 4 to get rid of my fraction. How many terms are there? There's currently three terms. This is a term, this is a term, and this whole thing on the right is one term. Once I distribute the negative 5 fourths on the right, then it would be two separate terms. I haven't done that yet, so it's one term. So if I multiply each term by 4, 4 times y is 4y, 4 times 8 is 32, 4 times negative 5 fourths times this mess over here, doesn't matter what that mess is, I'm multiplying and dividing by the same number, they cancel. So that gives me negative 5 times the sum of x and 15. If I distribute that negative 5, get negative 5x minus 75, I believe. If I add 5x to both sides and add 32 to both sides, going to get standard form is 5x plus 4y equals negative 43. Number six, same directions. Make an equation that goes through this point as a perpendicular slope to this line. So I want to get y by itself to get it in slope-intercept form. So I subtract 6x from both sides. And if I divide each term by negative 4, negative 6 divided by negative 4 is going to reduce to positive 3 over 2. 8 divided by negative 4 is going to be subtract 2. So the slope here is 3 over 2, which makes the perpendicular slope negative 2 thirds. Point slope form, y minus y sub 1 equals the slope times the difference of x and x sub 1. y sub 1 is 12. I feel like there's an earthquake right now. Huh. Something's going on. Anyhow, uh, the slope here, I'm going to keep doing this because this is more important than me saving my life. We got negative two thirds times the difference of x and 2. Uh, once again, here, I'm going to get rid of my fraction right here, right away. I'm going to multiply each term by 3. We got 1, 2, three terms. It's going to give me 3y minus 36 equals negative 2 times the difference of x and 2. If I distribute that negative 2 using the distributive property of equality, get my x's on, on the left, my constants on the right, I'm going to get 2x plus 3y equals 40. Number 7, for what value of k is this graph parallel to the graph of this other equation? What values of k are the graphs perpendicular? It seems confusing, but it really isn't. Find the slope of each of these equations. Let's just take one step at a time here. To find the slope of this equation, I need to get y by itself, get it in slope intercept form. I'm going to subtract kx and subtract 10 from both sides. And if I divide each term by negative 7, divide two negatives, you get a positive. 
multiply the two negatives, you get a positive. Therefore, the slope here is k over 7. That's the slope of the first line. Second line, do the same thing. Y by itself. Divide each term by negative 14. Slope is 4 sevenths. So, question, what, is, what would k be to make these parallel? Well, to be parallel, they have to be the same. So you set them equal to each other. k over 7 equals 4 over 7. Multiply both sides by 7, and you get k is 4. Perpendicular slope? These two slopes that were given, that we just discovered, have to be negative reciprocals of each other. So take one of them, not both. Take one of them, reciprocate it, and change the sign. I'm going to do that here with four sevenths. If I multiply both sides by seven, I get k is negative 49 fourths. So this will be the perpendicular for k, this would be, um, to make them parallel, would be 4. Number 8, show that triangle ABC is a right triangle with these given vertices. Let's first give a quick sketch of this. A is negative 1, 2. B is 4, negative 3. And C is negative 2, negative 1. It appears that the right angle is going to be at C. So if it is, that means that this slope has to be perpendicular to this slope. So we need to find the slope of BC also find the slope of AC. If those slopes are negative reciprocals of each other, then it's a right triangle. Delta Y over delta X. Y values for B and C are negative 3 and negative 1. X values for B and C are 4 and negative 2. make my signs a little bit easier to work with. I'm going to get negative 2 over 6, which is negative 1 third. So we would expect the slope of AC to be positive 1 third. Got delta Y over delta X. Um, I said positive one third. I mean positive three. That would be a negative reciprocal. The y values from a to c: two minus negative one. X values: negative one minus negative two. Clean up my signs a bit. And that's going to be 3 over 1, which of course is 3. So show that these tri this triangle is a right triangle. We've just shown it. We we'll probably also want to write down, since the slopes of these two segments are negative reciprocals, that means they're perpendicular to each other, 
which means it's a right angle, which means it's a right triangle by definition. Number nine, T-Bone starts riding his bicycle at 10 miles per hour. At the same time, Tyrone starts riding his bicycle in the same direction from a point five miles north of T-Bone. So let's say that this is north, this is south, east and west. So Tyrone is five miles north of T-Bone. Here's Tyrone, here's T-Bone, they're five miles apart. So it says that Tyrone is traveling at a speed, a rate of 10 miles per hour. Pardon me, that's T-Bone. And it says Tyrone also rides at the same rate. So he's also going 10 miles per hour. If the two gentlemen continue to ride at the same speed, will T-Bone ever catch up to Tyrone? doesn't tell us what direction they're going, but it doesn't matter. Even if they're going in the same direction. If they start at the same time and they're going at the same velocity, they will never catch up with each other. If they're going in the same direction, say they're both going east, uh, they're riding parallel to each other. If they're riding parallel to each other, they'll never catch up to each other. They'll never intersect. If they're riding literally in the same, uh, I guess if they're both riding north or south, they'll both be on the same line, but always be five miles apart because they're going in the same speed. So everything I just said is your answer. Number 10, given the trapezoid, prove analytically that the lines joining the midpoints of the non-parallel sides of a trapezoid is parallel to the bases of the trapezoid. This problem is a whopper. Let's plot these points. We got point A. Coordinates, 0, 0. Point B is BC. Let's assume those are positive. That means you go to the right B, no idea how far that is. You go up C, no idea how far up that is. C is DC. Don't know how far to the right, but we do know it's the same height as B. And that needs to be over here. I'll explain why it needs to be over here in a moment. And then D, this point's going to get erased. D is A0. So don't know how far to the right to go, but go to the right and then stop. Here's how we know for sure that C is in this location and is not here. This is trapezoid A, B, C, D. That means you have to be able to connect those points in that order, A to B to C to D. If, if you had C over here, then it would be connected A, B, C, D, and that wouldn't form a quadrilateral, so that would not make any sense. Just to save some room, I'm going to pull this over here just a bit. And I don't want you to think that D is directly above here. Connect those points. We can see we have this figure. First of all, how do we know it's a trapezoid? We know it's a trapezoid because this is a horizontal segment and this is a horizontal segment. You can tell that because the y values here are the same. They're both C's. 
these y values are both zero. By the way, this here is an A. Looks kind of like a 9. So what are we supposed to do? Prove analytically. That means using distance formula, slope formula, midpoint formula, or a combination of those. That the lines joining the midpoints of the non-parallel sides, these are the non-parallel sides. Those are called legs. So prove that the midpoints, we'll call this midpoint N, and we'll call this N midpoint M. So it says prove analytically that the lines of the that the lines joining the midpoints of the non-parallel sides of the trapezoid is parallel. Uh, this should say that the line, not lines, but line. So that line, if you recall from geometry, is called a mid-segment. So what this question is telling you to do is to prove that segment MN is parallel to segment AD and BC. That's it. To prove it's parallel, you just need to find the slopes. The problem that we have is that we don't have the coordinates for M and N. We don't have those coordinates to be able to find the slope. But we can find them. Coordinates for M is the midpoint of segment AB. Midpoint of segment AB is the coordinates for M. It's the average of the X values followed by the average of the Y values. X values for A and B are 0 and B. Y values are 0 and C. Therefore, the midpoint of segment AB and the coordinates for M are B over 2 and C over 2. What about the coordinates of N, which is the midpoint of segment CD? Take the average of the X values followed by the average of the Y values. X values for C and D are A and D. Y values are C and 0. Therefore, the coordinates of N are A plus D over 2 and C over 2. Let's find the slope of M N, that segment. The difference of the Y's over the difference of the X's. Y values are C over 2 and C over 2. X values are A plus D over 2 and B over 2. The numerator, we get 0. The denominator, we get a big, hot mess. But it doesn't matter because 0 divided by anything other than 0 is 0. So we have the slope of segment MN, that's the mid-segment, is 0. Let me fix this 0. It is not pretty. I'm supposed to show that's the same as the slope of the parallel slides. So let's find the slope of AD, for example. We should find this is also 0. Our y values from A to D are 0 and 0. X values are 0 and A. It gives us the slope of 0 over A, which is 0. So since the 
slopes are the same, that means we have proved what it is that asks us to prove. This work is not written in a logical order. So I'm going to number my steps. I drew this, I did this next, I did this next, I did this next, and I did this last. That way if I look at this later, I'll know the order in which I did these problems.